So you'd hit the indicator stalk, nothing happened. Um, so yeah, that was probably the scariest thing I've been given the keys to. Although I, I only had to drive it a mile, I thought, okay, this could be an interesting mile. Oh, hot. So, so hot. Oh, can I just sit here and just melt? Oh, I feel like I'm going to. Oh, right. Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another, albeit sweaty, episode of Pit Stop Sunday. Today in the UK, well in this part of the UK, it is at 33 degrees. So yes, um, hot to say the least. And if I look like a, a tired, sweaty mess, I do apologize. It's because I am a hot, tired, sweaty mess. Um, I've been doing some work on the lay on today. So doing a, a, trying to do a mechanical work in a workshop today was not much fun. Now, speaking of workshop, that is really the main topic of today's video, uh, what it has been like to work in the motor trade. Now, a lot of my, my background in my career has been the leisure industry in gyms. Uh, I started off, well, I, for a long time, I my job role was a customer service advisor. I worked for a few different gyms and essentially I was part receptionist, part salesman. So I would obviously serve customers, see them in, but I was also, um, another part of my job was selling selling gym memberships. Um, and to be fair, I was okay at it. I wouldn't say I was amazing, but at the same time, I wouldn't say I was bad either. I was, I was never really a hard seller. Um, I, I, I kind of tried to let, let the product sell itself. But anyway, that's not what I'm here to speak about, but that is, a very large bulk of what I was doing up until this point. And then I uh, worked for a private health company and I worked in the call center there. But thankfully that wasn't selling anything. That was more um, customer, su customer support. I think that's a better way of putting it. I don't think I could do, I don't think I could ever do telesales. So for those that, that do do it, then I've got some, well, I've got some respect for you, but at the same time, uh, yeah, I kind of wish that job role didn't exist anyway. So yes, the motor trade before I get too sidetracked. Now I've only been working in the motor trade for about, um, well, if you include furlough, which you can't really do because I wasn't working, but I've been with the company for almost a year now. Uh, time's flown by actually. So I've joined at the end of September last year. It, effectively, I've come full circle. You see, when I did my work experience many moons ago, I did it in a car repair garage. Uh, it was local to where I used to live in South London. And it was called, uh, I think it was called Quantum Car Customs. I don't know if they're still there, but I spent uh, one or two weeks there. Uh, and to be honest with you, I don't quite know why I chose to deviate from that path. I think as I got through um, secondary school, I got more into sport. Um, and I thought, actually, I'd quite like to to work in the leisure or, or sports industry. And that's what led me to go to college. Um, but I've always had some form of interest in cars. And if, now I know they say that you shouldn't have any regrets, but if I could go back and change things, I think I would have um, gone to college and, and studied car mechanics. But um, hey, coulda, woulda, uh, coulda, woulda, shoulda. Um, to be fair, if I'd done that, I may have never have met my wife, Patsy, because I met her at college. So. Who knows what might have happened? So yeah, things happen for a reason. But of course, I'm now working in a car repair garage. Um, so in case you're wondering what, what it is called, it's called Cedar Garage. They have two branches, uh, their main branch, and they have their German car specialist branch. I work at the latter. And as I said earlier, or I think I said earlier, I've been there since September last year. So almost a year, um, if you include furlough, which you kind of can't do because I wasn't working. Uh, I was on, on furlough for about three months or so. Um, and yeah, when I first started the job, I had a lot of confidence and I thought, okay, I know about cars. I'm not, I'm not the most mechanically minded person, nor am I a qualified mechanic. Uh, so my job, you'll be pleased to know that um, my, my job role is not fixing people's cars because I don't think uh, you'd want me fixing your car, to be honest. Now I do, I do the customer service side of things. I, I, uh, I help, help out in the office. Well, I say help out, I'm probably more of a hindrance sometimes, but I try to help out, I do try my best. And this job has been a bit of a shock to the system 
because I've worked in fast paced environments before where you're having to juggle lots of things at, at any given time and you've got um, quite a few uh, different things that, that you need, need to be looking after or doing. Uh, for example, when I, when I used to work in gyms, it, there'd be quite a few occasions when I'd, I'd have a queue, queue of customers outside the door, our computers would be down, you've got three people waiting to be shown around uh, because they're interesting, interested in joining, in, in joining the gym. So I know what it's like to work in a fast paced environment and, and leisure can be very fast paced and it can be stressful. So I felt quite well prepared for joining this job. Um, and I've got a reasonably good knowledge on cars, uh, not so much fixing them, but, but I, I'd like to think I know more than, than your, your average person when it comes to cars, not that I'm an expert. Um, and my, I remember my, my first few days there, I was really confident, maybe, maybe a little bit uh, uh, gung-ho, because I, was, uh, I hadn't really been trained at this point because I was pretty much brand new. And I was answering answering phones and taking messages and uh, trying serve, trying to serve customers and, and, and basically trying to do everything I possibly could to just to help out. And in the end, it turned out I was a little bit over eager and I had to be kind of pulled back a bit. Uh, the, the management there basically said, Aaron, we like your enth enthusiasm, but dial it down a bit because um, we need to train you. you. You know, we've got certain ways of working. It's great that you want to get stuck in, but you need to um, hold off a bit and just try to walk before you can run. Now, to be honest, I did take that a little bit personally. I did, I did, um, that did knock my confidence a bit and, and they didn't mean, mean it to it. That's just how I perceived it. And that's how I, I took it that I understand why they said that because they wanted things to be done, done their way. And that they are, that, that they are a garage that has a very strong reputation and a certain way of doing things. Therefore, they want to make sure that their employees are, are, are following that kind of ethos, as it were. I, I have to be honest, th this job can be really fast paced and you can have lots of different things on the go and you've got customers waiting for their cars, you've got parts to process, you've got parts to order, you've got other little bits to do. Um, and sometimes it, it can be overwhelming, it, it can be. There have been some points where I've been sat at my desk, almost head in my hands, thinking I can't do this because it's, it can be very overwhelming, almost uh, uh, overstimulating, almost too much for your, for your brain to, to process at one time. It's like trying to spin 10 plates, only they're on fire, and if they drop and break, they'll explode. That gives you a, a good kind of analogy of what it can be like in my job. Um, but it can be enjoyable. Although in this job, there have I have had peaks and troughs. There have been times where I've thought, oh, you know what, this this really isn't for me. And when I when I applied for the job, on paper it looked like my my dream job. Well, not not my dream job, but a, a very appropriate job uh, for what I wanted. It, it, on paper, it looked to to suit me down to the ground um, because it was involving cars great the the pay was good great the hours weren't too bad great um it was really local in fact i, I can walk to work um which is very handy indeed and it, everything just looked really good uh and then that, uh, and but there have been some times where uh, i i have struggled in the role um, but there has been a decent amount of support around me and to be fair the the garage has been very patient with me i think other businesses may have just that sacked me off by now <laughs> and I must admit I was on furlough for so long I actually talked myself into thinking that they were just going to make me redundant because I was a little bit useless um when I went back to work after being on furlough that was a shock to the system so I've, I forgot although I was only off for a little bit of time I forgot just how busy and fast paced the uh the workload can be and yeah it, it, when I went back I was overwhelmed uh to the point where I thought I was close to breakdown, even though I'd only been back for a few weeks. And w one thing I will say about my job is that you need to have confidence to do it. But yeah, it has been it has been a steep learning curve. I think that's the best way of putting it. Um, but yeah, I am grateful that they have been patient with me um, because some days I, I look back at myself and I think, you know what, if I was my manager, I probably would have got rid of me or found an excuse to get, get rid of me. Uh, but hey, 
that's probably me being harsh on myself. I, I am and always will be my, my own worst critic. Uh, that's just a part of who I am. Sorry, I need, do need to take a drink. I'm parched. Um, working in the motor trade can be fun. It can also be quite stressful, but as can any job. Um, but there, I think I think what else I've had to uh, other things I've had to adapt to in this role. It's just a different. It's a different culture. I'm used to working for for big corporate companies. Uh, which are relatively faceless, um, whereas uh, working at, at Cedar is a very small, tight, almost like a family kind of vibe, and it's very, it's, it feels very much like a community um, because we we serve the local residents. Of course, we do get some customers that that come a little bit uh, further afield. We actually had a customer in this week from Norfolk, but they were visiting the area and needed to get their car fixed. Whereas in my previous jobs. Uh, particularly in my last job, I'd be sat in a call centre. One minute I could be speaking to someone in Cornwall. Next minute I could be speaking to someone in, in Yorkshire. So the, the, yeah, it's it's quite a different culture. And of course, working in a in a car garage in a, in a repair garage with when you've got the mechanics there, it is more of a, of a ladsy kind of vibe. There's there's more banter there, and it's not quite so serious as as a kind of corporate office. And that's not to say they're not professional. Of course they are. But what I mean is, yeah, it's a different, almost almost a different way of working, a, a different environment. Although it has been a steep learning curve, it has been interesting to learn more about cars and, and learn about, pardon me, learn about some of the, the faults and what causes them and what, what you can do to fix them. And it, it's good because it helps, it's helping to build my own mechanical knowledge. Not that I'm a qualified mechanic, um, although I would like to learn more and I, I wouldn't mind getting a, a qualification in that field um but yeah who knows um yeah i don't really know what what else to say really and um, what let, let me briefly say tell you what i do as part of my job so of course i'm responsible for the serving customers so when customers drop their car off um i have to see the car in mark it in as on site so the mechanics know the car is here put where the car's parked because that saves a lot of time if because it, to say the car's there but you don't know don't know exactly where it is that's going to cause a problem uh also responsible for picking up the phone ordering parts uh, processing parts when they come in returning parts we don't need or that that may be incorrect uh, which doesn't happen that often but it does happen um i'm responsible for upselling so if if we get a car in for a service and it turns out that I don't know, one of the coil springs is broken, for example. I give them a ring and say, oh, just so you know, your coil spring's broken. We would advise getting, getting that fixed. Uh, it would cost you X amount. So that's part of my job as well. Um, and just general customer service um, bits and bobs, really. Um, yeah, it, it has been a bit of a roller coaster. I think that's the best way of putting it. But I must admit, the last two weeks um, have been better because I've, I've been more confident. I've, I've had more self-belief and that's really helped because when I don't have self-belief in my job then then that can be a bit of a nightmare because it's difficult to to get the motivation for, for me to to kind of do my job properly um and also when I don't have that self-belief I, I almost second second guess everything I think I'm doing so I, I asked you guys to to submit some questions into me in regard to uh, what it's like to 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 work in the motor trade and what my experience has been so far. So I thought I'd go through some of them. Um, so, so I've got, um, is the place you work in repairing any electric cars? Uh, what do you think the future of repair garages will be when more cars are electric in the near future? So at this moment, moment in time, as you can imagine, we don't see many electric cars in. Uh, whilst I've been there, we've had two. We've had a Tesla and we had a BMW i3 um, so there's at, if i'm not mistaken there's only one technician who can work on electric cars at our site and he is our master technician um, he's also um the the co-owner uh, uh, of the company um so yeah we we don't get many electric cars in but when we do um yeah it's that technician who who looks after them uh, in regard to uh, what do you think, well, what do I think the future of repair garages will be when more cars are electric in the near future? I suppose for a certain, to a certain degree, it'd be a bit easier because you won't have an engine you need to service. So it'd be, well, I imagine it'd be easier, well, 
in some ways easier to work on, but other ways harder because they're a bit more alien, I suppose. They're not your, your normal car. I know electric cars are getting more and more popular, but um, from, well, from the point of view from the garage I work at, we don't see many very often. So yeah, we've seen two in the time I've been there. That, that gives you an idea of, of how, uh, how rarely we get them. And we do get a few hybrids, but again, those are quite rare and there's only certain technicians um, who can work on those as well. Um, how long you work there and what exactly your job is? Well, uh, I've explained that already. So I've been there almost a year and I'm a service advisor. Uh, let's see. What's the strangest car you've had in the workshop? Um, now, this will shock you. I can't think of anything we've had that's been really strange. Uh, we did have a, a imported Mercedes. I think it was like a like a camper van. It was a V class. It was. I don't think it was a model that was actually sold in the UK. But we had one of those in yesterday. Well, I say yesterday. Um, I'm filming this on Saturday, so yesterday would have been Friday. Uh, that was a bit strange because it was really difficult to get parts for it because the the number plate, although it had a UK number plate, it didn't. It doesn't actually register to anything because it's a Japanese import. So. Yeah, that was fun in games because the parts we got for that were wrong, so we we had to reorder some of the parts. Yeah, that was a challenge, but I can't think of anything strange we've had him. Um, let's see, what else have we got? Um, so, how are garages coping with the change in the ways are built? What with one more cars being being bonded, two more cars having some element of hybrid technology, and three. The rise of smaller engines and stop start. Um, I take it most garages have to implement a large training program to cover all of those elements mentioned above. Um, yes, of, of course. Um, you, well, maybe not so much on the turbocharged engine side of things. Uh, I wouldn't know too much because I'm not. I'm not on the mechanical side of things. I'm more the office staff uh, side of things. I don't know too much in regards to the training courses for the uh, mechanics because that, that, that wouldn't get organized by myself that, that would get organized um, no, I think it's normally organized by the master, master technician if I'm going to be honest so I must admit sorry I can't really answer that question very well Henry because I don't really have the knowledge knowledge myself but as I mentioned a few moments ago in regard to, in regard to hybrid cars we've only got um, certain uh, technicians who, who can work on that um, and I've got a few questions that were submitted to me on Instagram so they're, they're on my phone, so you have to excuse me. You have to excuse my really dirty fingernails. I've been working on the car today, so yeah. Um, so uh, forgive me if I've missed it, but what are you now doing in the trade? How is it all going so far? So yeah, as I mentioned, service advisor. Uh, yeah, in regard to how, how it's going, I've, I know I've spoken about it at, at a decent length um, already. But yeah, it's, it's been tough. It, would I say this has been the toughest job I've had so far? Potentially, yes. And I would say I've made more mistakes in this job than I probably have done in, in all of my career. So um, yeah, as I said earlier, it's been a, a steep learning curve. I haven't, I haven't made any huge mistakes, but I, I, I just, I, you know, I, I went through a phase where I'd make lots of little mistakes. And I still make, make uh, some mistakes now, but I'm still kind of new. Can I still say that I've been there almost a year? Well, nine months if you, if you count furlough yeah i'm still kind of new i'm still still kind of kind of new but yeah uh, hopefully uh, i'll get better with time um are there any any tricks of the trade um not really and even if there were it's, it's not something I, I would really be able to speak about in this in this video um but no i can't really uh it's quite a broad question but no i can't think of any um what was your worst experience with a customer? Now, as you can imagine, I can't really give out too many details because um, I can't reveal too much of my work. But um, I'd say my wor worst experience with a customer, this was quite some time ago, uh, a lady brought her car in to be MOT'd and it failed because one of the tires was, was dangerous. Uh, I think it was either really low on tread or it had a bulge in it. But, I can't remember exactly, but she had one tire that had a problem with it. And I explained to her that, well, the cars failed the MOT, therefore, um, if you take it back, you, it, it, would, it, would, you know, you, it would be illegal to drive it around because you'd be driving around with, with a tire that's potentially dangerous. Um, and we don't keep tires in stock. Well, 
we have some tyres in stock, but the majority of our tyres we have to order in. Um, and the, we can't always get them the same day. It depends which supplier we use. And I explained to her that um, that the car, the fill the MOT, it needs a new tyre, um, and we wouldn't be able to get a tyre that day. And she, she kicked off big time. Um, and she was really not happy that she wasn't able to get her car back that day. Uh, I can't remember how it ended, but I think in the end we were able to use a different uh, tyre supplier and um, we, had to, we had to go and get the tyre from them. Normally our tyres are delivered. Um, but yeah, she really wasn't happy. And in hindsight, could I have dealt with the issue a little bit better? Uh, probably, if I'm going to be honest, I probably could have dealt with it a bit better, yes. But uh, th that was quite some time ago when I was still quite new. Um, but yeah, she was not a happy bunny whatsoever. Um, and that's, that also probably counts as the, the next question from the same uh, Instagrammer, which was, uh, what, what were the worst experiences you've had? That was probably one of them. And as much as it was really stressful at, at the time, and it just felt like I was being shouted up for no reason, at the end of, at the, at the, end of the day, it's not my fault. Her car, her car failed the MOT. As much as it did stress me out for a day or so, I, I got over it. Um, let's face it, some customers, well, some owners don't like to be told that their car's failed its MOT because it's, it's bad news. It's, you know, no one likes to uh, find out their car's failed its MOT unless they're kind of expecting it, uh, which this lady wasn't. Um, what's next? Um, are you actually working in this photo? So. The photo I used for, for the question is the photo I've also used for this uh, for the thumbnail of this video. Uh, the answer to that question is yes, of course I was working. How dare you, Chris? That's from Pocket Rockets, uh, good friend uh, and fellow YouTuber. Uh, and uh, next question, actually, but I think this is the last question, in fact. Has anything shocked or surprised you more than you expected? Um, yes. Um, I... I've just been, I have been shocked at how intense the job can be. It can be very relentless in regard to the workload and just when you think you've caught up and you've, you've got your breath back, there's something else to deal with. So it's very fast paced and I say this job isn't for, for the faint hearted, um, that, that's for sure. Uh, I thought I had another question, bear with me a few moments please. Ah, that's right, I, I thought there was another question. Uh, what's the scariest car you've been given the cars to. Now the answer will probably shock you, and I would explain why it was the scariest. Um, it was, again, I can't really give too many details, of course, because um, I can't really give out you know, customer details or that, that kind of thing, but it was a uh, Volkswagen Transporter, uh, more specifically a T4. Um, and you may think, what's so scary about that? Well, let me tell you this. It failed its MIT, um, with numerous advisories. I think in the end, if you count major defects and minor defects and that sort of thing, I think in the end it had a total of, uh, I think it was 27, yes, 27 advisories. Um, may have got, it, got that a little bit wrong, but it was approaching 30, the most I've ever seen in all my life and will probably ever see. Um, and I can't remember exactly what was wrong with it because there was quite a lot wrong with it, but I had to, take it from one site to the other because we do all of, all of our MOTs at one site, um, which, is the, uh, which is the site I don't work at because I work at, well, I don't know if I, if I said earlier, but we've got two sites. We've got the German car specialist branch, which I work at, and our other site, which is larger and deals with the non-German cars. And that's also where they do their MOTs. So I had to drive it from that, that site back to the site I work at for us to do some work on it and do some further diagnostics on it because it had quite a few different issues. Um, so it had a seized caliper, brake caliper. I think the brakes were getting low on the front or rear axle, I can't remember. Um, the emissions test had to be stopped because it was it, the, the van was generating that much smoke that it had to be, the, the emissions test had to be, um, it had to, yeah, they had to put a stop to it and the vehicle wasn't starting properly and the the wiring loom for for the the ignition wiring um yeah i don't know who had re repaired it previously but they hadn't done a great job so it would not only would it take ages to start when it did start you could smell a faint burning um and it was where the wiring was was well it wasn't done very well and the wiring was burning 
Um, so yeah, so he had a vehicle which which could potentially catch on fire because the because the wiring was was so poor, and there was also a problem with the one of the wire why one uh, well, of the cables going to the battery. Yeah, it didn't stop very well. Um, it 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 had a lot of smoke. Uh, oh, the indicators didn't work. Yes, just just remember that. Yeah, the indicators didn't work. So you'd hit the indicator stalk, nothing happened. Um, so yeah, that was probably the scariest thing I've been given the keys to. Although I, I only had to drive it a mile, I thought, okay, this could be an interesting mile. Uh, <laughs> yes, um, that is the scariest thing I've been given the keys to. I, I've had the, the great fortune to, to drive some, some interesting cars. Uh, and I would love to. I would love to to document them, but of course I can't because that, you know, that wouldn't be fair because um, they're customers' cars, um, and that would be quite irresponsible of, of me to do that. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've driven a few interesting cars. I've driven an old Sirocco. Uh, I've driven a BMW Z3M. That was that was nice, really nice. Um, yeah, uh, I've driven I've driven a Tesla. What else have I driven? Uh, I drove an old. 7 series um this week i drove a relatively modern smart car for the first time this week i didn't like it um yeah so what i like about this job is the variety you, you never quite know how each day is going to go and it's interesting to see the different type of types of cars we, we get in. Uh, as you can imagine, us being the German car specialist, we do get some nice cars in. We had a, a C63 estate in last week. I think we've got another C63 coming in next week. Uh, we had an RS4 in. We've had uh, brrr, we had a McLaren. Uh, uh, McLaren? What am I on about? No, we didn't. Well, we have had a McLaren in, but not whilst I've been in the company. Sorry, a Mercedes. Uh, AMG GT, that was very nice. Mm. Uh, we get a few 911s in. Um, what else have we, ha have we had in? Uh, we had a, a, not quite exotic, but interesting for me. We had a uh, Volkswagen Golf GTI Edition 30. That was in this week. That was nice. Um, yeah, we do get a good mix of, of interesting cars that, that come in. And uh, every now and then we do get something a bit exotic. Um, yeah. So that's really it, really. I don't know, don't know how long I've, I've been speaking for, but yeah, that's uh, that's basically what it's been like to work in the motor trade. Um, in a nutshell, it's tough, intense, not for the faint-hearted, stressful, but it can be it can be fun and it, and there can be good banter. Um, so yeah, it, it it is a tough job, but it is slowly getting easier the more I do it. Um, so before I turn into a, a puddle of sweat. I will go through uh, some of your comments for the last uh, few weeks or so. Just quickly, I want to interrupt myself before I go through the YouTube comments because earlier I completely forgot to speak about a scenario that happened this week which is quite weird and surreal. So a customer dropped off his car, nothing unusual there, but then he paused for a few moments and said, you look familiar, at which point I was a bit surprised and said do I and he said um you do YouTube don't you and I was like yes in my head I'm thinking this is getting weirder um and he said um oh uh, remind me what's the name of your channel and I said oh it's car obsession he went yeah that's it um yeah and I've watched one of your videos at that, that point I was quite humbled and thought oh this is really cool um and I asked him what video did you watch and he said oh it's, it was your review on the Ford Focus ST estate and I just thought that was really cool. It's quite rare that I get recognised anyway. Uh, but to be recognised at work, which has never happened before, was just, yeah, quite surreal. Uh, and, and even more surreal when you consider that a few days before that, earlier this week, uh, I actually thought to myself, I wonder how long it will be until a customer recognises who I am. And then a few days later it happened. So, yeah, uh, super weird. And just a, another little anecdote on that matter, actually. My previous manager, who, who now works for, for a different company, when I first joined Cedar, he said to me for quite some time, I know, I know I'm sure I've seen you before. I, I know you from somewhere. And he couldn't work it out. And, and I, I, think, I think this actually bugged him quite a lot. Then one day, he came in and said, I've worked it out. 
Uh, and I said, what do you mean? So I, 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 I know where I know you from. I thought, oh God, this sounds ominous. And he said, oh no, I was watching one of your, one of your videos and you went to the um, Goodwood Breakfast Club when it was Supercar Sunday, didn't you? I said, yeah. And this was two or three years ago um, that, that I did that vlog. And he said, no, I, uh, I remember I, I went to that event, I saw you filming, and there's actually a point in the video where I paused it and you can see me in the background. It's a little bit blurry, but, um, and he actually brought the video up and you could see him in the background. So yeah, that's really weird because he was my manager and, but he had known, he, well, he had known me uh, before I'd started working there. Um, yeah, that's was, that was really quite, quite bizarre. But yeah, he took him quite a lot, quite some time to work it out. But where, uh, uh, I think he was quite pleased that he did because it was probably kind of nag nagging away at him. But yeah, again, that's quite surreal. Anyway, let's move on to the YouTube comments. Right, so I want to kick off with um, a YouTube user by the name of NB um, and I thought this was quite an amazing story so I wanted to share it with you guys so he or she uh, commented on my uh, throwback review with the Leon uh, and they originally put uh, I bought a brand new Leon Cooper in 2008 and sold it in 2010 uh, because of uh, a growing family I miss it so much and I asked what he bought instead and this was his response um, just hear this. Uh, I replaced it with a new 3 Series Touring, but a little update on this. Uh, it sounds unreal, but after looking at the Cupra videos last week, I managed to source my old Cupra, and I've convinced the owner to let me buy it off him. Uh, I'm getting my old car back after 10 years on Friday. <gasps> How crazy is that? So this guy, or, or lady, uh, sold their car, uh, and then bought it back 10 years later. Incredible stuff. You, you couldn't make it up. You, you really couldn't. Um, so yeah, it looks as if my, my Cooper videos uh, persuaded that person to, to get back into a Cooper. So yeah, that's, that's really cool. I, I really uh, I really like that comment. Uh, right, what's next? Now this one made me laugh. Um, as much needed because I was on my way um, to seeing Patsy in the hospital. So I needed a, a bit of a giggle. Um, a bloke by the name of Henrik Larsson. Is that the Henrik Larsson? Wasn't he a footballer? Played for Celtic. And Sutton sets up Larsson here. Larsson. Oh, he's in! Henrik Larsson! That is sensational! It was Celtic, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, Swedish uh, striker. Very good. It was Henrik Larsson. Is that the same person? Could be, probably not. Anyway, I digress. Um, he commented, I thought he was as drunk as a sailor. Turned out my playback speed was 0 0.75 for some reason. <laughs> and and I, I was really concerned when I read the first part of that message. I thought, did I really sound drunk in a video? How's that happen? But yeah, it turned out his, his playback was, was set to uh, slower than normal. So it was probably, um, yeah, I probably, actually, I want to. I want to hear what that sounds like. I'm intrigued now. I oh, can. You can change, change playback speed. I've got to hear this. Offers just four hundred and thirty liters. Or if you want to compare it to the Honda CRV hybrid I had last week, that had four hundred and ninety-seven. So the focus <laughs> is a clear winner here. The load lip is quite low. That's fantastic. The Metropolis white paintwork. <laughs> I, I still cannot make my mind up on it. I don't know whether I like it or not. So let me know, guys, what you think. Anyway, yes, back to the engine. <laughs> I have. That's fantastic. He's right. I do sound drunk to say it. Or I sound like I've got some kind of uh, problem. Um, right. <laughs> yeah. That, that comment tickled me, it really did. Right, next comment is from a long-term subscriber and a regular commenter, uh, Mr. Sunnyboy. He's put on my, uh, this is on my replacing the battery on my set, uh, Mark II set Leon Cooper video. He's put, you make everything look so easy, laugh out loud. Well, I'm glad I make it look easy. There's probably some things I I'm, make look more difficult than they are, but I appreciate the comment. Um, yeah, not everything I do is easy. When I did the, uh, the radiator, when I changed the radiator on my, on my Mark I, that was a pig. It wasn't, the job itself wasn't necessarily difficult. 
just fiddly because some bolts didn't want to come out and then other bolts didn't want to go back in. So um, if I made that look, job look easy, then uh, I, I need to give myself a pat on the back for my editing skills because that, that wasn't, a, uh, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it wasn't an easy job. It was just a faff. It was, yeah, just a bit of a ball ache if I'm going to be honest. Um, can I say ball ache? Am I going to get demonetized for that? I don't know. Uh, that's for YouTube to decide. Uh, right. Uh, next comment is from someone I don't think is subscribed to me. I don't recognise their username, but uh, they've left nice, uh, quite a nice comment. This is on the. This is a video I did a while back actually when I was speaking about how much money I earn on, earn on YouTube. Spoiler alert: not much. Um, and he's put. So his, his name username is Boris Bold. Um, he's put. Keep doing what you love. You helped me in my decision to get a Vitara S, which I'm very happy with. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks so much for your honest and down to earth approach. Well, thank you very much for your comment, Boris. Much appreciated. Um, so yeah, a very nice comment. A great feedback to get. Uh, I think we've probably got one, one time for one more comment, particularly as I don't know how long, long this video is and I need to go and visit Patsy in the hospital soon. And last comment I will read out will be, uh, again, this is for quite an old video, even older than the video when I was talking about how much money I earn on YouTube. This is my Audi Q2 review, which I did back in 2017, I think. Uh, may, have, may have been 2018, but regardless, a long time ago. So they, um, Instagram, not Instagram, the uh, YouTuber user is called Harvey RNG. Uh, he's put, uh, love this car, I'm 17 and this is my first car. You lucky so-and-so. My first car was an x Red Fiat Punto, it was crap. Um, Love this car, I'm 17, this is my first car. I'm so grateful for this car, it's amazing. Mine is in a graphite color, great video. Thank you very much. And uh, count, yourself, count yourself very lucky you've got an Audi Q2 as your first car. Uh, yeah, there will be quite a few people that we would be quite jealous of that. And there we have it guys, another episode of Pit Stop Sunday done and dusted, uh, which is probably just good timing because A, I'm starting to merge into the seat because I'm getting stuck to it because I'm so sweaty. And B, I, I need to dash off soon to go and see Patsy in hospital. But yes, anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you, you have enjoyed it. If so, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.